What screws us up most in life is the picture in our head of how it is supposed to be. Life is a journey. I want to share mine with you. As you can tell by the title down below, I have a story time video for you. This is going to be my second story time. I don't know if my anxiety video is up, but if not, stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I hope you liked it. And my last video with the Wet n Wild palette, which was the Au Naturel palette, I asked you guys if you wanted to hear some story times for me, um, and I asked you to thumbs up that video, and many of you did, so here I am doing a story time. This story time is going to be all about my first heartbreak and meeting my husband. Um, I know a lot of you who watch me are young, either in love or looking for love, and I know what I went through is probably the story of many girls out there. The only difference is, is that I'm using this platform to share it with you because I want you guys to make better decisions than what I made and just be able to relate and refer back to someone else's story so that you don't feel the way that I felt when I was in that situation. Before I start this video, I just want to mention my background. I'm on my bed. I wanted my story time videos to be a little more intimate, so if you like this background, great. If you don't, let me know in the comment section down below and I can definitely try to film somewhere else. I just want it to be relaxed and chill and kind of like chatting with a friend. So that's my dog right there. He's just a mess. I'm sorry. Okay, to start, I just want to say also that this is my experience. Um, I know I'm opening up to a lot of your opinions, um, which I gladly, you know, accept and appreciate but I do want to let you know that it is my experience it is a way that I dealt with something I don't know if I would have dealt differently now but I certainly am a lot more smarter than I was then and I'm hoping that I can pass that on to you guys anyway um I think the first time that I was in love was when I was 19 years old um I probably thought I was in love way before that, but my real, real boyfriend was when I was 19. I'm not going to state his name, but at that time, I was working at a restaurant as a waitress and a bartender, and he was dining there. He was not a table that I was serving. He was actually a table that one of my girlfriends was serving, but he was by my table, and I would constantly pass him. Um... Throughout the course of the night, he kept giving me eyeballs and waving to me, and by the end of the night, he asked me for my phone number. I gave it to him, and he then texted me the next day. We hung out. I believe our first um, date was mini golf. Um, anyway, I didn't think that it would turn into anything because at that time, I was young, and I was the kind of girl that would always date someone because I would look for that kind of love and attention, you know? Um, and so when I found him, he was just kind of just a void to fill at the time. That's how I honestly saw him. Um, but we actually, obviously we turned into something else. It became very serious. I started going on like family outings with his family. I met his mom, his dad, his sisters, and like, I want to say a year into our relationship, we had our families meet for Christmas, and it went really well. When we met, though, rewind, when we met, I was in cosmetology school full-time, I was in college part-time, and I was working full-time, so I didn't really have a lot of time. He was in the police academy getting ready to graduate to be a police officer, um, and I think he had, like, maybe two months remaining until he was done with that. Anyway, at the time that our families met, after that he graduated the police academy and he went, you know, on duty and they gave him really, really crappy hours. I believe he worked from like 5 p.m. to 
2 or 3 in the morning. It was some crazy thing like that. So I barely saw him. So his work life became his life. And I wasn't necessarily a part of that. That's going to come in handy for later on in the video when I continue with the story. Anyway, he and I started having some arguments because we didn't see each other a lot and I felt like I wasn't getting the attention that I needed. Um, I was a troubled girl. I still am kind of troubled, but I wasn't able to identify the things that I needed in a relationship and communicate that because of a lot of the things that I was carrying with me from my childhood. So I wasn't a really good communicator, so I would do things on purpose to get a rise out of him. Like I would accidentally text him something that was meant for someone else. I know I can't be the only person who does this or who did this and it would piss him off naturally. I would say things like, oh, you're so funny. Can't wait to hang later or I'll be right there. Calm down. Things like that that will get him thinking like, who the hell are you going to go hang out with? And it would really make him angry and it would turn into a big argument. But somehow I liked it because it was attention. And looking back at that, I'm like, wow, you were messed up in the head, Jess. But anyway, one day he came over my house and it, I, I, honestly, it was like out of nowhere because we had our issues, but I'm telling you, this guy was like, I want to marry you. You know, my mom is going to retire. She's going to move to Florida. And he lived with his mom at the time. So he was like, I want to you know, take over the payments of this house. I want to start a family with you. I want to marry you. I want us to have a life together. So we had long-term plans. And yeah, we fought, but I never thought that... I thought he loved me more, I guess, because I loved him. I felt like I loved him so much. And so one day he came to visit me. I was living in a basement apartment and... He just came in the house and he was like, look, we got to talk. My heart sank. And he was just like, look, there's a lot of tension and I, I just need a break. And that happened. Well, before that happened, I would find like weird text messages in his phone from people. I believe one of the names was Courtney and he would tell me, oh, it's a girl from work. They're going out for drinks. I want to hang out with them, whatever. So when he came over my house and said that to me, we were like in the middle of talking about it and he got up to go to the bathroom so I checked his phone again and there was another text message from Courtney who said, are you coming out tonight? And when he came out, I was just bawling, crying because I knew, I knew. First of all, I know what I need a break means because I used to do that to everybody. Like I was the girl, like I said, who always was dating someone. If I wasn't in a relationship with them, I was dating them. And in order for me to break it off, to move on to the next, I would use excuses like, I need a break, or, you know, I don't think I'm ready for a relationship, or this is getting very overwhelming. And I would be the heartbreaker. I would always break hearts. And at that moment, when he was telling me he needed a break, I immediately thought, oh my God, this is like karma, because I would always use that line. And I honestly, like literally would make boys cry. I would always make dudes cry because I would break their heart and I knew exactly how they felt in that moment because I was so broken at that point I was bawling crying I threw him out at that point he left I waited till he left and when he left I like stuffed my face I don't mean to sound dramatic but I remember this so vividly because the pain the like the pain was emotional but it was it was almost like I couldn't feel my body like it was also physical. Like, this is really what heartbreak feels like. Like, this is why people can die of a broken heart. Because the pain is so intense. I remember stuffing my face in a pillow and screaming. Like, bloody murder. Screaming. To the point where he heard me from outside and he came back inside and tried to console me. And he stayed for a little. Until I calmed down. And... He, you know, talked talked more with me about it. And when I said, well, you know, do you, can we just work it out? And he said, no, I lost it again. I threw him out. And at that, I, I don't even know what happened at that point. I know I cried all night long. I cried probably for a good, like, <sighs> few hours until I called my best friend at the time. Now, this is the messed up part. And this is the part that really sticks out in my mind even more. 
my best friend at the time, I called her and I told her the situation. I was in tears, crying, bawling. And she was like, I'm coming right now. I literally waited for her for like three hours and she never came. So I was basically disappointed and let down twice in one day. Like I had to endure that pain, that sense of loneliness. I was questioning my value and it happened all I, I experienced it all by myself and that pain lasted for months like maybe a good six months I was so sad I remember going to work and having to go into the bathroom and just crying my eyes out I would come out my eyes would be red my nose would be red and I would have to wait on tables or serve alcohol to people and hear about their lives and try to smile but I couldn't. I actually dropped out of cosmetology school at that point. I ended up going back and actually reapplying the hours that I um, did complete to another like program, like another semester to, in, a, in order to finish it. But at that point, I dropped out. I stopped going to college I was barely working. All I would do is go to work and sleep. And then that turned into going to work and afterwards going out. I don't drink or smoke. I never have. But I started to try to fill that void with something else. And that void, basically what I was trying to do was go out and party and while out. I would barely be home. I was just dating random guys to try to make myself feel better about myself. And I was just in a really bad place. And I would always still text him to try to get him to love me again. I would, you know, tell him that I missed him. And sometimes he would call me, but it would always be late at night. And, you know, I remember breaking up with a boy, like a guy that I was dating or a boyfriend that I had at that time. Just because I felt like we could get back together. Like he was started calling me late at night and asking me to come over. And I would come over. And the night that he asked me to come over, the first night... I called my boyfriend and broke up with him because I thought, oh my God, we're going to get back together. Like I was so stupid. And so he used me for a really long time. He knew he can use me. I let him use me. And it's a really sad story now that I revisit it. I couldn't hear certain songs on the radio because it would remind me of him and I would just instantly cry. And I know that's like so... So, like so straight out of a movie but it's so true and I know a lot of girls are like that we just associate music with a certain time in our lives and there was just the song by 311 Amber oh Amber is the color of your energy I couldn't hear that song I could not hear that song um, until at least two years after our breakup um, after a few months, after the after my heartbreak was over, he actually came back into the picture and started texting me and asking me how I was, and I just was over him at that point. The situation got very volatile. Um, he would show up unannounced. He would, you know, send me text messages that I didn't want, and it was just really hard for me to like lose him. But. After him, after the heartbreak and everything, one day, you know, after the random dating, I went to a Dunkin' Donuts with my best friend at the time who stood me up, who is no longer in my life. If you guys are interested in hearing a story time about lost relationships, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's another story. I ended up going to Dunkin' Donuts with her and one of our other friends, and we ended up getting a flat tire. And I had AAA at the time, so I called my AAA to come and help me, help us change the tire. Um, they were actually in, I don't know why we were dressed up, but we were. And my husband came, my husband now, came to the rescue to change the tire. And at the time, I noticed him, but I was like, nah. You know, I was just uninterested in real relationships at that time and actually our friend not my best friend but our friend was like trying to get his attention and he just wasn't paying attention to her which I thought was so funny 
Um, and my best friend at the time was like, Jess, you should really, like, go talk to him. I was like, no, I don't want to talk to him. She's like, he's cute, you should talk to him. I was like, no, I don't want to talk to him. So he ended up changing my friend's tire. My best friend and I went in my car, and our friend went in her car, and we drove away. As I'm driving, my husband now went into his tow truck and started filling out paperwork. And I was talking to my best friend at that time, and I was like, should I give him my number? She's like, yeah, you should. Best advice she's ever given me, <clears throat> ever. So I, I whipped the car around, <clears throat> and we stopped by his tow truck, and I actually have her get out of the car to give him my number because I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. But I was like, go ahead, give, go give him my number. So she gets out, and she gives him my number. And we start texting, like, maybe a week after, and a lot happened in between that. If you guys want the full story, let me know. I just don't want this video to be too long. But a lot happened between that. I lost my phone. I stopped contacting him for two months. He somehow started contacting me again. And, you know, I mean, the rest is really history. Let's just leave it at that because we're married now. I'm so happy. I look back at other loves of my life and I realize how insignificant they really were now that I really know love with him now that I have children with someone who love the children that we've made together and someone who's really stuck it out with me through all my breakdowns and all of my freakouts and all of my good times he just I'm glad that I endured such pain because I'm able to identify great a great love and that's one of the things that I'm hoping that you guys get out of this story you know I went through what I went through I hope no one ever has to go through because that pain I'm telling you is so severe and it could break someone who isn't strong you can understand why people contemplate suicide when they feel like they're so in love and they lose that person because they really feel like it really feels like your world is just crumbling but I'm here to tell you that it's not. That if you lose someone who you feel you love so much, have faith that that person wasn't for you. And it's so hard to remind yourself of that when you're feeling the way that you feel at that moment. But you've, you've got to somehow try to remind yourself of that because it's true. It's true, and I'm here to tell you that I lived it. I thought that that was the person for me. I thought we were going to get married. I thought that our plans were going to come through. You know, we were building towards something. We took the steps that we needed. We were looking at rings. We had our families meet. His mom loved me. My mom loved him. And it was just, it seemed so perfect, but it didn't work out. And honestly, I'm glad it didn't work out. Because my husband and I, I don't think that there is anybody who can compare to him. Just, we make a great team. And I just want you guys to know that even when things don't work out for you, and at that time I didn't think that way because I wasn't so grounded in my faith like I am today. Even though things don't work for you, even though things don't work out for you, it doesn't mean that your life is over. Better days and better people will come into your life. And I hope that's what you take away from the story time. So if you ever run into a heartbreak or a moment where you feel like your heart is breaking, please watch this video and hear about my heartbreak and know that I understand you. And I'm sure there are a million other girls out there who understand you. You're not alone and you'll get through it. I hope this was a helpful story time and a fun story time. I have some funny story times coming up. Thumbs up for that if you want to see it. Um, let me know in the comment section down below if you want to know the real, like the full story of how my husband and I met and just our lives up until our marriage. Let me know in the comment section down below. If there's a story time that you want to hear about, give me ideas. Comment section down below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.